Good morning, everyone. I am Carla. You have reached my floss tube channel, Carla Being Crafty, where I talk about mostly cross stitch, but also other crafts and a little bit of life thrown in. Um, this is my 17th video. It is Sunday, October 20th and um, I am very excited to be here today. I'm very excited to have you guys here with me. I passed 500 subscribers on Friday, so I can't be more thrilled about that, and I just have to say thank you so much to everybody who subscribed and is supporting my little channel, and um, so I am gonna do a couple little giveaways at the end of the video just to celebrate those 500 subscribers, and um, Here's to 500 more. Let's get to a thousand. Um, that's you know the next goal. <laughs> um, okay, so um, if this is your first time um, coming by my channel, then thank you for coming by. And um, you know, I hope you hit like and subscribe. Um, I'm having a great time doing this every week, and um, I'm branching out a little bit. And I've done a couple demo videos and. Um, yeah, so I'm having a lot of fun just sharing my love of cross stitch and craft, and and um, floss tube is just a wonderful place to be. It's wonderful to watch, it's wonderful to do, and it's just an all-around great community. So thank you for for being a part of it with me and letting me be a part of it as well. Um, okay, so just a little life stuff. Last night I went, um, I got invited to go to dinner. Um, at my brother's house. He was making chili. It was really very delicious. Um, and um, he and his kids were playing D&D, &D, which I've talked about a little bit, and they invited me to play with them um, as one of the, the NPCs or the non-playing characters so I could take over that character for the night. And um, I haven't played D&D &D in like 30 years, so it was a total trip. It was fun, and I got to hang out with my niece and nephew. Um, he's 11. She's 9, I believe. And then the little one... Um, who just turned five, he, you know, he was there obviously for dinner, but then he and his mom went upstairs to take a bath, and um, they're all just, like, such great kids, and I'm really excited that I get to go on this trip with them in two weeks and get to spend a lot of time with them, because they're just, they're just a fun family to be around, and um, very loud. Um, I, I am very aware of the fact of, like, how single I am and how, um, you know, quiet and, you know, my my life is. I mean, I always have the TV on when I'm here alone um, for company more than anything else. But, you know, it's just me and my cat. Cats don't make a ton of noise. <laughs> and I am not used to three rambunctious kids being very, very loud around me. So um, that was a little bit of a trap. It, not in a bad way. Just it was like, oh, okay, I'm not used to this kind of environment. But it was still a lot of fun. And um, what was kind of uh, interesting is I brought my cross stitch um, to work on for a few minutes and also I had something that I wanted to show um, Aaron and Stacy, which I will be showing you guys in a little bit. Um, but while I was working on it, my niece was very interested and you know, and she was looking at it and she ended up pulling out, um, I think she was like braiding a friendship bracelet or something. And at one point her little brother started bugging us and he's like, she was like, Auntie Carla and I are doing art. <laughs> so anyway, I asked her if um, when we go on the trip if she would like me to teach her how to cross stitch because um, I can you know bring the supplies and she said yes and um, and then I asked her older brother, you know if I'm bringing this for for Reagan, do you want me to bring um, stuff for you too so you can learn you don't have to, but you know I don't want you to feel left out and he's like, yeah, I'll learn. So I'm gonna bring stuff to show them and you know I don't know if that's gonna happen or not. Um, you know their kids sometimes their attention span is not um, is not there for for super long periods of time but um, I mean, I'm gonna bring it and if they want to learn then I will be happy to show them how to do it and um, I just have to look through all my stash and books and stuff and see if I can find a couple like really simple little patterns or maybe go on Etsy you know this week and print print out something easy um, for them to do so um, Anyway, so I was kind of excited about that. Just it makes me feel a little bit like the Pied Piper of cross stitch. So I got my mom stitching, and uh, she has three projects that are started now. Like she feels like she's, you know, she's like me, and she's got three projects. She asked me to get her needle minders, so I got her a bunch of needle minders. So she has two needle minders on each project, 
and they're all in hoops and they're all in their separate bags because she had to have separate project bags. So I gave her some mesh project bags and she has gone to town on these three projects and she's just loving it, which, you know, is great. And now my niece and nephew maybe will want to start. So, um, we're making it a family affair now. <laughs> um, so anyway, so last week, um, when I get to like whips and stuff like that, I don't have a ton to show you because I was so busy last week doing other stuff for cross stitch. So, um, I did my regular video on Sunday and then on Monday, um, as most of you may be aware, I did a second video where I demoed, um, my fabric dyeing technique, um, my very simple, uh, fabric dyeing technique. And, um, that video was pretty well received. So, um, I'm glad that you guys liked it and I hope that you found it helpful and that it encouraged you to, um, dye your own fabrics. Um, and if any of you are dyeing fabrics using that technique or really any technique, please post on Instagram and, um, and, uh, tag me in. My Instagram name is, um, at Carla with a K that's K A R L A W T H A K. And, um, yeah, tag me in so that I can see what you did. Cause that's, you know, it's really exciting. I love it when people are doing, um, you know, different creative stuff and, Obviously, I love colored fabrics. Um, I only have one project I think that's on weight, and it's an opal, and it's it's a long dog sampler, so you know the background kind of has to fade away anyway. But um, anyway, so I did I did that video on Monday, and then because that video went so smoothly, I was very encouraged. And on Wednesday, I got I get off work a little bit early on Wednesday normally, um, and I haven't for like three weeks because my um, my coworker has been on vacation, and so while she's on vacation, I stay later, but um, she got back, so I got to get off at my 3 o'clock time on Wednesday this week instead of my normal 4.30 or 5. So I got home a little bit early, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to start start doing the, um, the demo video on the diagonal stitching on full coverage that some people have, you know, asked to see. And so I did that and I, it ended up being like six different segments and, um, it went really, really well. And I put it together. It was like, it turned out to be just like a little under an hour when it was all put together and I watched it and you know, the vid, it turned out good. You could see the stitches, you know, I had some trouble setting up the camera. I have a flexible arm thing that, um, you know, because obviously you need to be able to see what's in front of me, not see my face. Um, but I was able to do that and it, it worked really well. So, I put the segments together using iMovie. I film on my, my iPhone. I put the se segments together, and then you have to um, move the whole film from iMovie to my photos, my photo albums, so that I can upload it to YouTube. That's the process that I use. So my phone gave me one of these, you don't have enough storage in your phone me messages. I've gotten that before and then, you know, I end up having to clean out my phone and um, turn it off, turn it on, clean out, you know, the cache and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I got overzealous in my cleaning out all the stuff and I ended up deleting the videos because I'm thinking they were in iMovie because when I upload videos to YouTube, I delete them off my phone because they're in YouTube. And I had that mindset, and I'm thinking it's an iMovie, not realizing that iMovie is drawing from my photo album. And, um, yeah, I deleted the videos. So all, I did, like, two and a half, three hours worth of work and deleted it completely off my phone. Um, so I didn't have that video to put up. And to be honest, it was, like, so annoying that I'm probably not going to do it again for a couple of weeks. So, um, yeah, so look for that video to come out in November. I'm going to wait until after my trip and then I'm going to do it again. Um, it was just so discouraging <laughs> that I lost that. I, I, you know, I wanted to scream and break things and cry and yeah. And I mean, it's just a video, but it was frustrating, but that took up my Wednesday. So I didn't do a lot of stitching that night. So, um, yes. <laughs> so that, that was crazy. Uh, other stupid thing I did, <laughs> as I'm true confessions here, is last week I was so surprised when I was doing my video and it turned out to be kind of like shorter than normal, 
Well, that's because I didn't show you any of the haul I had. Not that I had a ton, but I had a little bit, and I didn't even mention it. So this week, actually, I have a pretty full bag of stuff to show you. Um, and, um, and I'm pretty set. I, I mean, I say that, and I know I'm really bad because I just enjoy purchasing things, but I'm pretty set for the next year as far as supplies, definitely as far as patterns. Um, I have plenty of stuff to stitch. I have plans that I'll go over with you. Um, I'm still always going to probably look on eBay for really good deals on fabric and maybe flosses and stuff like that, but, um, but I'm going to try really hard to be at a very low buy. Um, I may have to get some batting at Joann's. That that is a supply that I'm going to need to do finishes that I am going to run out of. So that um, that I'll definitely have to get in the next month or so. But I'm going to really try hard in the next till the end of the year to to not make any purchases or to make very minimal purchases. Um, not that I mean, there's not a ton of stuff here, but um, but yeah. So that's that's where I'm at. Um, if I can find good fabric you know, deals, then I will get that because I'm enjoying doing the, the dyeing of the fabric, but excuse me, I forgot to pull this over. Um, but that's where I'm at. So I'm putting it out there. I'm going to try to really have a low buy situation as far as my cross stitch. And then next year, um, as I said, I'm, I'm pretty set. So, um, we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah. I mean, I know I'm not the only person in this situation where money's tight, so um, I want to try and be an advocate for um, that you don't have to purchase a thousand patterns. I mean, it's so tempting. But the other thing, and part of why I kind of did this plan sheet that, that I'll share with you, is I want to remind myself that I can go shopping in what I have if I feel the need to start something, that I have a bunch of stuff. Like, if I... I could not do everything that I have in a year. Um, so I, when new things come out, of course, you know, there's a desire to, to get them. And there are certain things that if they come out next year, I'm going to want to get them because they're completing things that I've already, you know, like, like if any, any more Hildes, Hilde patterns come out from Michelle Bendy, I want to get those because I really like Hilde's brew and I want to do the rest of them. Or if there's some other pattern comes out that matches something that I already have, I may want to get that. But but I'm going to try really hard to be very um, very wise about my purchases. Um, okay. So that being said, um, let's see. What did I do? Oh, so I did actually dye a couple more pieces of fabric that I wanted to show you. Um, there's some more that that are on the the dyeing video in case you. Excuse me, if you didn't see that. But on top of that, I did two more pieces. So um, this piece, I'm actually really proud of this piece of fabric. And I did iron them, but they need to be ironed again. Um, because I got a, a haul of fabric from eBay. Um, like I got like 15, 15 or so pieces of fabric and then a lot of floss. And there was actually some uh, perforated paper in this lot and um, and a sticky board. So that was kind of a cool purchase. Um, but I got this one piece of fabric and it was like the ugliest color. It was, they called it silver. It was in a, tu a tube. and um, But it was, I mean, pardon this, but it was like baby poop color. It was like a weird greeny, gray, browny. It was ugly. Um, but I dyed it and it turned out this really, really pretty green. Um, so I used two, the two, first, the bath, the first one was, um, a green that I made using denim blue and yellow. And then when that came out, then I did another bath with a green using teal and yellow. Um, and I just, I think it came out really pretty. So, I'm happy with that one. And then my second piece of fabric that I dyed, so there's a little story behind this one. Um, after my video last week when I was talking about going to Arizona, two um, 
two kind of cool things happen. One is somebody uh, messaged me on my on my video um, saying that they actually attend the temple that I'm going to be going to, so I might be seeing a subscriber at the moment as well. I don't know if they're going to actually go, but um, that's kind of cool. And then um, another um, uh, friend that I haven't met <laughs> uh, messaged me on Instagram, and she said that she lives like, um, an hour away from where I'm going to be staying and if I had any time over the weekend she would love to drive up and meet me and um, you know and just spend a little time you know getting to meet me and I thought that would be great and I am going to have a little bit of downtime um, where my brothers and his family they're meeting some friends and stuff like that so so I messaged her back her um, now I don't know what her name is on on um, YouTube, but on Instagram, it's Rusty Quilts. Her real name is Dawn, and um, yeah. So I messaged her back, and I said that, that would be great, and you know, and maybe we could stitch together and stuff. And so I'm really looking forward to getting to meet her. Um, and I said that I would bring her a piece of fabric, you know, because she's so nice to even want to come and meet me. Um, and I asked what color she wanted, and she said she prefers like pinks and stuff. But you know, whatever. And I'm like, well, no, no, no. Um, I'll make you a pink piece of fabric. So she requested a 14 count because it's easier for her to stitch on um, with her eyesight, which I totally get. And so this is the piece that I made. Hopefully she's gonna like it. If you see this, Dawn, um, and you don't like it or there's something that you want differently, then let me know. Um, again, it needs definitely to be ironed again. This is kind of a stiff fabric and the problem, the thing that I did is I did not follow my method. Um, that I showed in the video where I, I, um, let it just dry to damp and then I, and then I iron it dry. Um, I did it kind of later at night, so I let it sit overnight and get dry and then I sprayed it and ironed it, but that doesn't make it as smooth. So I actually might need to wet this down a little bit and then let it dry and iron so I can get it really smooth. But, so I did this with the line and then a little bit of purple to get this nice bright pink. I actually kind of think like, like I see chrysanthemums or something in it. I don't know, it's weird. That's one of the reasons I like this dyeing method. Um, I always see flowers and leaves in the, in the fabric. So let me know, Dawn, if you see this video, if you like that piece of fabric, because that one is earmarked for you. Okay, um, so I did have a finish this week. Um, I finished November, um, the pattern. Oh. Okay. So the hands on design year celebrations. I'm gonna take this out of the bag because I know that it shows there every week. Okay, so hands on design year celebrations and I finished where am I? Oh, November. Um and I thought I was going to be able to fully finish it, but I went out to dinner last night instead. So I'm going to hopefully get that done today, fully finish it. And then the second thing I did, and this is another reason that I didn't get a ton of stuff done, is I kind of got into this whole like little bit of a designing mode. Now. All I was doing was adjusting a pattern that I already had, um, the December for this year's celebrations. So, so it's not like designing from scratch or anything like that. However, I think the writing's on the wall that eventually I'm going to want to try my hand at, at designing something um, myself. Whether that means it's just going to be something that I'm going to make for myself or something that I'm going to try and market that remains to be seen but um, okay so what I did is the December um, right here which is totally cute but it's very Christmas oriented and I do not celebrate Christmas so I wanted to change that so what I did is um, I used the same, you know, the same lettering and stuff like that. Um, and I'm going to have 
the same package down here, which I haven't done yet, but this is what I've done so far on it. So I basically took out the elf feet and I added this menorah. And then I changed, um, the original pattern has like scalloping at the bottom and the top um, with like red, like scallops. So I took out the red and green theme because that's, that's not what I want. And I and said I kind of adapted the pattern that she had in November, which is um, acorns, but I shortened the top part to match and then added another stitch at the top to make the stem and I turned these into dreidels um, at the bottom. And at the top, because because of the spacing and stuff like that, um, I needed to I needed more space. So the top is not going to have the pattern. It's just going to have like the dots like over on the side here, and that's going to come down like this. So it's the same. Um, the December is the same. The box is simplified because um, I didn't have room for scallops and stuff. But it's also bigger because I changed the word from Mary to Miracle, so I had to make that box bigger. And then the package will be the same here, different colors, but it'll be the same package. Um, so that's what I, you know, quote, quote, designed. Um, it took a long time to do that. I did that Friday night. It was, it was hard to do. Um, I didn't have like a proper graph paper either. So that, I started working on this one piece of graph paper and I'm working along, working along. And, and I realized I counted, you know, how graph paper has like the darker, the darker lines. Well, it was a 12 count graph paper instead of 10 count graph paper. And I was thinking it was 10 count and I'm going along and I'm like, these numbers aren't matching up. And I finally figured it out. So then I had to take the 12 count graph paper and remark the lines to be 10 count. Um, yeah, I mean, this pattern was easy kind of to adapt just in that, um, you know, each one is like 50 by 50. So I, I had my dimensions. I already had the December target out to start with. Um, and then I just kind of adapted, you know, and I had the spaces like this space was where the elf feet were. So that's, you know, I took those out and I put this in instead, you know, but then I had to adjust, um, adjust the, the spacing a little bit, but I'm really happy with it. And it is now, um, mine and it now matches, you know, the celebrations that I use for my year of celebrations. And so that um, made me feel really good to do that. So those two things I worked on and then I worked a tiny bit on Hildy this week and really that's all the whips that I did. I thought I was gonna get Hildy done, um, but I got like sucked into doing this December thing and I couldn't put it down. And really, my plan was to do the month you know, before each month. So December isn't even due to be done until next month, but I got involved in it and didn't, I don't want to put it down. So I'm hoping I'll finish the December tonight or this afternoon and Hildy as well. So Hildy, um, I put in the ghosts and I actually used glow in the dark uh, for those. And then I did more on the house, but that's all I got done this week because again, I was working on the hands-on design stuff. So, so whips I don't look like I was very, um, that I got a lot accomplished this week, but actually I did, because I did two videos, one that got scrapped, and then I did uh, an evening of putting together this December pattern, so, yeah, so that's where all my time went this week. So, that brings me to basically haul and plans, and so... That's where the majority of this video is going to be. Oh, and then I can't forget. Oh, let me write it down. Um, I have to do giveaway. Because if I don't put it on my note sheet here, I'm going to forget it. That's what happened last week is I didn't write down haul. Okay, so I have a couple eBay purchases that came in over the last several weeks, you know, because I forgot last week to show you. One is I bought a bunch of, um, I bought a lot of, uh, Rainbow Gallery, these aren't Rainbow Gallery, sorry, these are Krynik, Krynik sparkly things. They're all different 
weights and so they're going to be used for different things like this purple is a medium braid and I know normally like the only thing I've worked with is the the number four braid so this is a number 16 but it's so pretty um and I figure I'll be able to you know figure out stuff to do with it and whether it's in a regular cross stitch or in something else or I use it for needlepoint um this is heavy braid this is number 32 um, and then there's a lot of um, blending filament, which I've never used, but I think that you're just supposed to use it with a regular thread. Um, but there's all kinds of really pretty in here. And I got this for, for a good price. And, um, yeah. So that's kind of an exciting little box of potential. Um, the other kind of thing along those lines, um, was I got, I entered like an eBay auction. So if you haven't, I am just dropping everything today, sorry. If you haven't, um, purchased stuff on eBay before, there's like two, two possibilities. There's buy now, which is basically... Um, you know, if you're like going to a thrift store and you just find something that's a good deal and you buy it. Or there's eBay auctions. So, obviously with an auction, you know, you can go in there and it can be like, you know, 99 cents for this great thing. And you bid and by the time the auction's done, it's at, you know, $82. So, auctions, you know, you have to be careful not to get sucked in. Because sometimes it's like you get into it and you start at a really low price. And then you really want the thing and then your reason goes out the door and you keep bidding. So you have to know not to do that. But there were three lots of uh, Rainbow Gallery things from one uh, seller. So three different auctions. And nobody had bid on it. So the starting bid was like $5 on each of them. And so I bid the $5. And I figured I would go up to like 6 or $7. Um, they each had a shipping of like three dollars or something like that but it did say that the seller would combine shipping so I ended up winning the bid so I ended up paying like eighteen dollars for all of this rainbow gallery um some of it is stuff that you know I've never seen before and I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with it um and I don't know exactly what to do with it this whole ring is um they're flare and crystal rays, and they're like these like ribbons, they're like ribbons. So I don't know if they will work for cross stitch, but since I do other stuff, that doesn't really bother me because I just feel like, you know, with all the different fibers, there's things I can find to do with them. I can use them for finishing, um, and they're pretty. And the way that these were sold, actually, they were in um, color lots. So I separated them out. It's a type of thing, but they were all, it was different when I bought them. They were all like, there was a lot of like all the blacks and grays and whites. And then there was a lot of like greens, I think. And then a lot of purples and pinks. So those are like the ribbony things. These are fluffy fleece. And these, I think, that you're supposed to use them for couching. So, um, so they're not something that you'd use like regular with regular cross stitch. You would um, lay them down and then couch them. So they could be used for some kind of embroidery project or for needlepoint. Um, but I really think that they might actually work really well for finishing, like as an edging type thing. But I think they're pretty. Um, this ring is all rainbow tweed, and this is a stranded. Um, it's a four ply stranded floss, um, so I can use it for cross stitch. And they're more tweedy. They're not, you know, they're not really shiny. They're more like woolen looking. They're made out of they're forty forty four percent cotton, thirty nine percent wool, and seventeen percent acrylic. Um, this one's really pretty. And then there's some really pretty green. And then, yeah. So, 
those are kind of really nice and again I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with this stuff but and then this package is rainbow fiesta and they're rayon rayon and they're super shiny so and I already I actually pulled out a couple of them and I, I showed them to you last week in my um, um, Glenn in Place project the bright greens I'm using on the snake in that um, so yeah so these are exciting because these definitely can be used in regular cross stitch these are six strands yeah they're six strands like a regular a regular floss and um, but they're super shiny so those I'm gonna have fun using So then I did another eBay auction that was like $10 and I got two kits and one of them um, is a, a small dimensions kit which I gave to my mom because I think that that's kind of a project that um, when she gets done with the three that she's doing now which are simpler that it might be something that she could do. Now it came with floss and uh, you know 14 count Ada. Um, she's not going to use that. I gave her also a piece of 11 count Ada. And she uses the uh, pearl cotton. So I left the floss with her because she can use it as color guide when she goes to set that up. But I think it's something that will be a challenge for her, but I think that it's something that she might like to do. So I gave that to her already. And then the other one that came with that, I just thought was adorable. Um, so that's something that I want to do eventually. Um, I just like this kitten. It's just cutie. So that... That's another thing I got. Okay. Now, I'm not sure if you guys were aware, but there was a 50% off sale. Um, Heaven and Earth Designs. Um, so, I came in, I went in and got two more patterns because they were on sale. And I actually, I've talked about the PDF versus, um, versus getting the, um, hard copy and I realized with Heaven and Earth Designs the hard copy they're just printing off their PDF on nice paper and you know so I figured I might as well just get the PDF and save the dollar um, I got the large the large size because that I can see without making any adjustments to it and um, so the two I got this is a tuxedo eyes this is the same artist as the lavender roses so it's kind of a companion piece to that. And I had a cat that looked so much like this. For He he lived to be 21 years old. His name was Herbie. And this is not exactly Herbie. Herbie had more black like all around here. But the rest of it, totally Herbie. The eyes, totally Herbie. So I did like that one. And then I got another uh, Nadia Tate. This is actually the first one I wanted to get and for whatever reason. I set it aside and I got a bunch of other ones instead but um, I have a piece of fabric that actually I bought with the intention of using up for this um, that has stars on it already so I was thinking I won't stitch any of that part I'll you know stitch the moon and the girl but I have this fabric that I think might work that has stars printed on it so and that one is what is it called Lullaby Kitty Faye. So I have a Catnap Faye, Lullaby Kitty Faye now, and I think I have two or three others. I like this artist, obviously, with the fairies holding kitties. So I got those two because they were excellent price. Then I finally used the gift card that my friend sent me for 123 Stitch that I had been holding on to, and I decided to use it to finish getting the flosses that I needed um, for the Village Bookstore that I'm going to start on January 1st. So um, I didn't need that many flosses though and so there was room on the gift card. So I decided to get a couple patterns and um, yeah so these are patterns. Two of them I got there and one I got when I purchased something else on Etsy. Okay and I have plans no, okay. This I just got because 
I have liked it since it came out and I want to do it in 2020. So the Suffrage Act. And then I don't have any like patriotic stitching um, other than, you know, like the July for the hands-on design. And you know, there's so much stuff that comes out and I like it, but none of it, you know, is that exciting to me. But I really like this one when I saw it. This is the Starburst and Stripes Forever. Um, and I just really like the kind of specialty stitches in it. I think that's really pretty. So this is what I want to do this year to have a, uh, like a July decoration. Um, and eventually I'll be able to have, you know, celebration things for all year that I can display. Um, and then the last thing that I got uh, pattern wise was the blue flower, which Gathering Honey, which is the, the pattern that I'm going to use in February for my um, B, B, E, E, Be My Own Valentine style. Um, that's got, that, that is the blue flower. So obviously I must like the blue flower because I also got this one, which, you know, I'm sure you've seen because a lot of people have shown it, The Night Walk Down. And my plan for this one is, I mean, first of all, it's beautiful, so... Um, and I liked, I like the, the, the words and everything, but giant black cat. <laughs> so this is the pattern that I'm going to use next August for my black cat birthday sale. So yeah, I'm excited to have already picked that out. And, um, because the thing is, is I guess for my, I, I have a lot of patterns with black cats on them, but for my birthday sale, I want it to be something <sighs> serious isn't. I don't know if serious is the right word, but I wanted to be something that feels significant. So I don't want to like do some cutesy Halloween black cat thing, although I love them and I have a ton of them and I want to stitch them, but I want it to be something that feels like significant that like, you know, 10 years from now I can take it down and go, I did that one in 2019 for my birthday, or I did this one in 2020 for my birthday. So yeah, so this is my black cat birthday sale for 2020. So there, you know, you're not going to see that one for a while, but Hopefully, if any of you join me on that, you don't have to stitch this, but this is the one that I'm going to be stitching. Okay, so the other, I don't have a lot of haul left. Um, when I ordered the floss, um, I had seen uh, Satsuma Street, um, which I, I love Satsuma Street patterns. I have uh, one or two. Um, but she started a floss tube and, you know, she doesn't do very many, but then she'll show like her designing and stuff like that. And she just showed a, um, like a Christmas mobile thing that she did, which is really pretty. Obviously it's not something that I'm going to stitch, but she did it on perforated paper, on metallic perforated paper, which I didn't even know that existed. So I've done perforated paper, um, projects, you know, you saw the, um, the things I did for my friend Tracy, um, the two wine things from Mill Hill. But I didn't know that there was metallic. So I got a package of gold and a package, package of silver. And each package comes with two sheets, 9 by 12. So these are a lot. But I have a really great idea for sort of a um, 3D, um, I'm going to call it ornament for lack of a better word. But um, I have an idea to make a dreidel, 3D dreidel uh, stitched piece. And then I think I can adapt that pattern to like a Christmas bobble or that kind of thing. So I might go ahead and, and design those, stitch them, and then maybe send the prototypes of the of the more Christmas ones to my friends and keep the, the dreidel one. But when I design them, I'll show you guys and see if, um, if it's something that you think that um, I should make the pattern available to people or what. Um, but I do have this really great idea uh, and how it would work and that I think it would look really pretty. And the perforated, the metallic perforated paper will be perfect for it. So I'm excited to, to have that sometime. I don't know if that's something I'm going to get to this year, November, you know, December before the holidays, but it's something that I think I want to work on next year for sure. And then the last stuff that I got was I got the flosses to, um, finish kitting up my um village bookstore I, I think there's like two or three missing that they didn't have um that didn't come with the, the order because you know 
they didn't have them in stock so I'm still waiting for a couple but this is how I've kitted it up like I said I, I was using the, the floss cards but I was only doing it on one side and I do really oops, I really like this method um, because they're all on one side and then I can just flip them um, I didn't have the sticker paper to put the labels on but I, I decided that it was okay I can just use the original pattern and I cut the symbol in the color yeah the symbol in the color and then I just white uh, wrote in the DMC number and then I had these clear round I don't know if you can see them but they're clear round uh, labels that I just put over the little slips to keep them on here so those will come out off really easily when this project is done and I can reuse not, I mean this project's gonna be what 10 years in the making so um, but yeah so these are the flosses for the village bookstore and as I said I keep the flosses in my master floss boxes and I just cut three lengths of each one um, and then as I need more then I can go get it and then I, I will be able to see if I start running low on a floss from the master box then I can order more I did order multiples of a couple colors just because I knew that those are the ones that are going to be um, used a lot but um, but for the most part even on a hate you only need one skein I mean black you're gonna need more if there's a lot of black if there's a big background color you'll need more but for the most part all the little shading colors and stuff you're only gonna need one and then, this is also for that same project, I got my two pieces of fabric that I need to decide between. So this is the 25 count Even Weave Easy Guide. And this is the 20 count Ada Easy Guide. As you can see, I mean, it's not that much of a difference. Um, I do want to do some test stitching on these. I might do that today. I know, because I'm going to use 10 stitch. I know the 10 stitch looks really great on this fabric. Um, I need to see what it looks like on this. This is going to be way easier to use as far as uh, ending threads. Um, so that's what I need to test. I'm leaning towards this um, just because, well, kind of like twofold. First of all, this is going to be a really long project, which means that I'm going to be doing it as I get older, as my eyes get worse, and I think it might be easier to use in the long run. Um, I don't regret getting this. I mean, as you saw, I got two more haids, so um, I will be able to use this. And um, yeah, so either way. Um, and then the other thing too is, is that I have the other one, the second, this, the uh, Rose Trellis Inn that I want to do after the Village Bookstore, so you know. So anyway. I'll, I'll test stitch on these and I'll let you guys know the final answer by the time I start doing the project. Okay, so last thing is we need to do a giveaway for my 500 subscribers. It's a little celebration, yay. And I'm actually going to do two giveaways. Um, the first one is just going to be a pass the stash, which, where did I put it? Um, I'm going to go ahead and pass the stash on the red kitten pattern. Um, I didn't mark on the, the original pattern, but I did kind of fold it differently. So there's going to be a, you know, a few more creases that were in the original, in the original pattern. But, um, that is going to be the first giveaway. And, um... So if you would like to be entered for that one, in, leave a comment below and um, make sure that you put uh, something about Red Kitten. Red Kitten is the, the um, phrase that I'm going to put in on the random comment generator. So yeah, this is the Norcorbit Red Kitten. So make sure you put Red Kitten in your comment and you'll be entered to win this one. 
And then the second giveaway that I'm going to do, and this one's a little bit more personal. Um, you guys have seen that I have had a ball dyeing fabrics, and um, so I would like to dye a piece of fabric for you. Um, so what you need to put in the giveaway fabric is going to be um, the key uh, word. So make sure you put the word fabric. But your choices are going to be, and I'm basically going off of what I have, right? So you could get either a piece of... 14 count uh, Ada or 18 count Ada. That's mostly what I have in white to dye. And then what I'd like to know is what would be your preferred color scheme. Um, I don't have anything to do anything in the ta uh, tan, black, anything like that. But I could do yellows, oranges, uh, pinks, purples, blues, um, I, you know, or you could like make it look like foresty or make it look like fall or make it look like pink and purple um, just give me some idea and then whoever wins it then I can message you and get a better idea of what you want but what I need to know is what your preferred fabric size would be and then what your preferred color scheme would be and whoever wins I will dye a piece of fabric for you so you will have a hand dyed by Carla by Carla being crafty piece of fabric um, which for me that's pretty exciting I don't know you know I think I think the hand dyed fabrics are gorgeous so that is what um, my giveaways are so two giveaways and um, we will do the drawing next week um, yeah so and for the first one make sure you put red kitten in your comment and in the second one make sure you have the word fabric in your comment and you can enter for both um, I'm not gonna well I mean it's random so I guess the same person could win both if it comes up that way but um, so that's what uh, what that's what the giveaway is gonna be and again thank you guys for you know helping me hit that 500 um, and you know if you like my channel um, if you have a floss tube shout me out and get your guys over to me and then let me know that you did that and I'll return the favor and um, yeah tell your friends and you know like me on Instagram and talk to me there um, keep sending me messages because I love them and uh, so I think that's gonna do it for me today you guys um, hope you have a great stitchy week next Saturday is supposed to be our uh, stitchy made up in Fullerton right by my mom so my mom is so excited to go see that to go back to another meetup you guys so I hope they do it at that same restaurant um, I don't know for sure yet but I'm hoping they will because my mom is is so excited to do it and you know and she's at a time in her life where unfortunately she doesn't, she doesn't have a lot of like perks so I'm glad that I can um, help her you know make friends and, and do something fun um, with that but um, so I hope you guys also have a, a, a great stitchy week get a lot of stuff done um, and you know enjoy the fall weather it's cooling off here a little bit it's like in the 70s now uh high 70s still and sometimes in the 80s but it's still the 90s have, have gone i think hopefully hopefully we're good because the 90s are too high for me um but uh have a great week you guys um thank you so much for for all of your support and in the meantime remember to always be content be kind and be crafty this is Carla. Have a great week, you guys.